Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, our Jolt training webinar series today for uh, Chick-fil-A operators. Um, we're letting everybody just kind of join into the Zoom that's registered, so we'll give everyone a second to join. Um, just a quick uh, logistical point. If you're new to our webinars in the Zoom platform, you should see uh, the chat and Q&A functions. That's where you can uh, post any questions you have as we go throughout the, the webinar today. And uh, we know everyone's busy and I really appreciate you guys carving out time to join us today uh, on our webinar. Um, we'll go ahead and get started uh, by doing some introductions for our, uh, our panelists and presenters today. So first of all, my name is Ryan Jensen. I'm the Director of Customer Success. I'm, I'm the bald guy there at the bottom. Um, I lead our Customer Success Manager team for uh, our mid-manager, or mid-market and enterprise brands. And um, uh, then we also have Jeff Verbeck, who is here uh, presenting with us today. Um, he is a member of our customer success team. So part of, our, part of our webinar today is helping you get the most possible out of Jolt. And one thing I would say right in from the get-go is to make sure that you're leveraging your customer success manager as, as much as you possibly can to help you get the most out of Jolt. And that's really what they're there for. So with that, Jeff, I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, kind of your involvement with supporting Chick-fil-A operators. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. So yeah, as Ryan said, my name is Jeff Verbeck, um, team lead here at Jolt Software, and my team and I um, strictly just work with Chick-fil-A. Many of you uh, that are here joining us, thank you for your time. I know we probably work together quite a bit. Um, and really, my whole position here is to help you guys succeed and see that value and get that visibility and vision around um, what Jolt can do for you and what Jolt can do more for you. Um, and that's really why we're doing this webinar is to just get more visibility around that to make sure that you guys are, are seeing that value brought. So I'm super excited to have you guys take some time out of your day. And it's been a pleasure working with you. Awesome. And then we have some uh, special guests joining us today on the webinar today. Um, a few Chick-fil-A um, operators and uh, team members. So uh, Connor, uh, let's start with you. If you could introduce yourself to the audience and uh, let everybody know a little more about you and your background with Chick-fil-A and your role with Jolt. Yeah, it's uh, first I just want to really want to thank you guys for letting me come on here with you guys. I'm super excited to kind of just push forward here and show everyone what Jolt can do. Um, as far as Chick-fil-A goes, I've been with Chick-fil-A going on five years now. Um, this is my second location and with going two different locations now I've really been able to broaden my experiences um, and then Joel has been definitely one of those experiences that I've dove into deeply and I really 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 enjoy doing work with Joel and all of the members on the Jolt team um, every I've had so much success using Joel and I'm super super excited to share it with everyone here Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us, Connor. And then we also have uh, Matt Wilson. Matt, if you could introduce yourself to the audience as well. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm actually the ball guy on the bottom, just like uh, Ryan said. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I've been with working with Jeff for about three, four years now. I and mean, Jeff's just my main man. Anytime I have questions with Jolt, anything pertaining to Jolt, he's my guy. He's always coming back to me and let us know the, the perfect way to do it. Uh, as far as Chick-fil-A goes, I've been with Chick-fil-A for almost 15 years now. Uh, I was a grand opening certified trainer for Chick-fil-A for many years, and Jolt's really just kind of taken this whole new leap of food safety in our restaurant to a whole new level. So I'm excited to share with you guys some of the things that we've learned. Awesome. Well, again, we're really uh, appreciative for you guys joining us today, and uh, I hope that everyone on, the, on our webinar today, that uh, in the end, we, we want to be able to surface um, new ideas and uh, best practices. And so... I really appreciate Connor and Matt being here to share some of that with you. Um, hopefully everyone can come away from today realizing there's a lot more in Jolt that uh, you could get uh, uh, to add value to your organizations, your operations. Um, so we're looking forward to diving in today. Um, <clears throat> just so everyone knows, we are recording the webinar and we'll share that link afterwards if uh, you or any other team members or colleagues want to view that. So just uh, be aware of that as well. And again, like I said at the beginning, please submit your questions as we go. We, we want this to be as engaging as possible. And um, so don't be shy about uh, posting any questions. Um, Jeff and myself and, and uh, Courtney from our marketing team, they're, they're on and we'll be monitoring the, the questions that are coming in um, or even suggestions or ideas. Uh, please post those as well. And we'd be happy to acknowledge and stop to uh, address those as we go. Um, I think to start out, so the purpose of this webinar is to really surface more awareness of everything that's in Jolt, um, whether it's checklists and how you can use those across your organization for lots of different uh, um, tasks. 
uh, in digitizing things and moving away from a, a paper environment to everything digital. Um, also talking about the information library and how to store uh, and upload media and training uh, documentation or other videos. Um, using printer labels, which uh, a lot of you are using already. Um, and then uh, remote temperature sensors and being able to uh, remotely monitor your refrigeration and uh, freezer units. Um, even within each of these features, there's a lot more that could be uh, accomplished and the value that you can get out of each of these features than perhaps you're doing today. And so that's the goal today is to, to surface that to everyone. The other thing that's uh, I think important to highlight here is um, Chick-fil-A has a uh, pre-designated uh, subscription price. And so the great thing about Chick-fil-A is being an operator, if you have Jolt and you're only using uh, one feature right now, the great thing is you can add these other features uh, with no additional costs, you know, with the exception of any hardware costs that may come from, from that, but there's no additional software costs. So we, uh, again, there's just a lot of value out there that we want to be able to help surface today for, uh, for each of you in the audience. So uh, with that, I think we're going to jump in here. Um, just at a high level, I'd love for, for uh, Connor, both you and Matt, to maybe speak to what was life like before your team moved over to Jolt? There's a lot of uh, bullets on here. We'd love to hear just details from each of you. Um, talk to us just briefly about that transition and what things were like before you were on Jolt and uh, now kind of the advantages that you've seen just at the high level within your teams. Uh, Connor, do you want to start there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Um, I my first location uh, we were inside of a mall and we I had never ever ever heard of Jolt before and we used old reliable pencil paper laminated sheets dry erase markers um, I'm sure a lot of stores can attest to this um, they do have their utility to them um, but it's not always the most accurate there's a lot of room for human error um, it's easy to lose it's easy to get destroyed. Um, there's a lot of cons to using pen, paper, laminated sheets, everything like that. Um, we were introduced to Jolt uh, shortly after I got there, maybe a little over a year after I got there. And the turnaround was very quick as far as noticing results. Um, organization as far as um, checklist goes, um, you, cleaning lists, anything like that. Um, we were able to keep organized and all, all in the same place, same location, you pull up an iPad, it's all right there for you. Uh, so we noticed a huge increase as far as organization goes and product, productivity as well. Um, it, people were easily able to access the list, stay on task, everything like that. And all that goes hand in hand with accountability as well. Um, with each item we were doing, we were able to see who would do it, when they would do it, et cetera, et cetera. So, Overall, we saw a huge turnaround, and I, I was loving the results with that. And we were able to carry that over to the next door and just grow and grow from there. Awesome. And, and Matt, uh, what would you add as far as the experience from, uh, from your operation? Kind of that yeah, my, my experience kind of goes hand in hand with Connor's, but you know, uh, our, our location in Oklahoma, we're one of the busiest ones in Oklahoma, and we had a gigantic just accordion just full of just laminated pieces of paper and we'd use the visa v sweat erase markers and you know you, you set that sheet down on the, on the counter the counter is always wet here at chick-fil-a and you set that sheet down and then it gets erased and then you're, you're trying to figure out who did what who did what uh, the accountability piece was, was a huge thing with jolt because on on the checklist part you can actually see who did what and so if something was not done correctly you can go back and look and see hey let's let's this is a training opportunity let's let's take that person let's train them how to do it correctly and just you know I, i'm a person that absolutely just hates paper and this was able to just take this you know a thousand light years ahead of what we were doing and i have uh four ipads stationed around the, the restaurant now that really just they all talk with each other so you can see who's two people can be working on the same checklist at the same time and it syncs with each other it's just it's, it's like magic in my eyes uh, that's awesome i i <laughs> i there's no hesitation in showing your hatred for paper, but uh, we feel that hatred with you. And, uh, but you know, that, that's one of the advantages. And, and I think for a lot of folks on the call today, you, you may or may not be using uh, all the features within Jolt. And so part of this really is to help you see the vision of how you can go completely digital with Jolt. And, and so it's a great call on that. And thanks, Connor, for those comments. Um, to start out, we're, we're going to cover each of these areas and talk about you know more specific examples. But 
Um, Courtney's going to throw up a poll question you should see in your um, in your Zoom platform. And uh, really, we just want to know more about the audience uh, on the call today. So if you could tell us how many of Jolt's features is your team currently using, um, you know, across checklist labels, sensors, or the information library. Uh, is it just one of those? Is it two? Is it maybe three or more? Um, or maybe maybe you're newer to Jolt, and that's fine too. Um, we, we figure there's probably a mix of, uh, of folks on the call today. So before we get into a little bit more about checklists, we'd love to hear that, uh, that from everybody. As everyone's kind of wrapping up their response to that, um, Matt, let's go back to you. How would you respond to this one? I, I think you're using um, most, if not all, but what would be your response as far as your use right now? Yeah, we're definitely using all of it. Uh, checklist, I mean, like you said, labels is our number one user. Uh, we got with checklist about a year ago and sensors we're using extensively now, which we'll talk about later on here in the chat. Um, and then information library, obviously with us having Pathway and Chick-fil-A, it's a little bit different, but uh, we still can utilize it a little bit, which I think uh, Ryan or Jeff will show you guys more about that. Yeah, perfect. And then Connor, I, I know, uh, I think you guys are, are not on sensors yet, but you're hoping to, to move to that soon. But uh, so I know there's, uh, but some of the others, but how would you respond to this one as far as summarizing your use? At your yeah, so uh, we're actually on three out of the four there. Well, like you did say, we are planning to hopefully get transition to those sensors sooner or later. Um, but yeah, we've been using checklists and labels, and uh, we've dabbled into the information library. Actually, we're really hoping to get more utilization out of it moving forward. Um, we'll definitely cover on that more, but as long as with everything else. But um, three out of the four for right now. Okay, great. Well, Courtney, let's let's uh, close up the the poll, and maybe if you could summarize the results real quick for the audience. You bet. Fifty-two percent of today's attendees indicate they use two Jolt features and 30% are indicating they use one Jolt feature. Oh, interesting. So, okay. Well, that validates why we're doing this webinar. <laughs> so about 80% are using two or less, it sounds like. Um, okay, so thank you. Thank you everyone for participating. That, uh, that helps kind of help us know the audience and validate that a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start now, Jeff, I'm gonna hand it over to Jeff. He's gonna kind of lead us through with Connor and Matt, um, a little bit more of a detailed walkthrough of, of checklists. Before we do that, we want to know about, for those of you that are using checklists, how are you using them? So if you could respond to this poll real quick that Courtney's going to throw up um, onto the Zoom platform. So tell us, how is your team currently using checklists? Is it basic opening closing lists, temp logs, manager transition lists, food safety prep audit lists? Um, maybe are you starting to customize and build your own lists? Um, are there two or more of the above? We're kind of curious if, if people are already starting to use multi, have multiple uses there. Or again, if you're new to Jolt, you're not currently using checklists, that's fine. Or, or you just haven't started that transition yet. Um, Connor, let's start with you real quick. How would you answer this question for your current utilization of Jolt checklists? Oh, sorry, Connor, are you there? Yeah, Lou. sorry, I, my, I was talking to myself there for a second. Um, <laughs> So as far as all these lists go, uh, we utilize pretty much everything on our poll here, um, as well as additional others. I mean, the number of opportunities for all the Jolt lists is endless. Uh, you name it, you can do it in some way, <laughs> shape or another. Um, a couple of things, I mean, that aren't even on this list that we are able to capitalize on as far as using these checklists. Um, uh, training, training is a huge thing that we've been able to kind of couple with Pathway. Um, we use training guides. Um, as, as our list to help um, monitor the process and track um, where employees are in their training progress. Um, and that definitely helps us to stay organized with that. Um, and I mean, on top of that, we do simple things just like order forms. Um, I'm sure Matt can attest to this as far as paper is terrible when it comes to anything at this point. And just having just simple order forms being submitted through Joel and then you get emailed directly when a form submitted makes things so much easier. Um, but then, like I said, man, the possibilities are endless. It's awesome. Yeah, so that you're, you're talking about the, the training checklist. Those are custom lists that you've built uh, that to work well for your operation. That's a great example. Uh, Matt, how about you guys? Uh, maybe share a little more detail around how you'd respond to this and how you guys are using checklists in creative ways. Yeah, so we're doing everything you see there. Um, obviously, I think before we went to checklists, uh, I think I got a phone call from Jeff one day. He was like, hey, dude, you're – you're only using labels. Why aren't you using checklists? Why, like talk me through your process here. Why aren't you doing it? And I think my biggest fear was the setup process. And I was like, okay, 
how long is it going to take me to take my, my paper checklist and my laminated checklist and turn them into, you know, this, this digital format. And I, I was scared to be honest. And he showed me, no, dude, it's, you could simply just bulk import it and it, it's you're within five minutes or you're set up pretty much. And so we spent a little bit of time and it literally within an hour or two, I had all, every single one of my checklist on there. And so then we took that piece and we made it even more. So everything like right now, Chick-fil-A, we're, we're, we're food safety conscious on everything. And so we've actually taken some of our, we have a, we've created an, an Eagle shirt checklist that pops up automatically three times a day. And the Eagle shirt checklist is kind of like a mini, it's a mini safe, but it goes a little bit more in depth. And so it's assigned to specific directors throughout the day, depending on what they're working that day. And each director is required to do some of those, those checklists and it records uh, temperatures, times, everything you possibly imagine on there. But I think the, the biggest thing that we're using list for right now that was, it kind of blew my mind when Jeff told me about it was uh, disciplinary action. So for disciplinary actions, you know, like I said, I hate paper. Disciplinary actions on paper is awful. Uh, you know, you write it down, you can't read it, so on and so forth. Uh, so we were using Google Forms. And um, so basically we'd fill out a Google Form, the team member would basically type their name in on that Google Form and submits it over. That's how we went digital first for disciplinary actions. And uh, I got on a phone call with uh, EPLI at, at one point uh, a few months ago and EPLI informed me, hey, no, that's that you can't do that. You have to legitimately have them sign that disciplinary notice for it to be kind of valid. And so I called up uh, Jeff and Jeff was like, hey, yeah, we have that functionality right now. And so we got it set up and it's, it's already pre-programmed for Chick-fil-A's pretty much and or just in restaurants in general. And uh, it was ready to go. He just sent it over to me. I had it activated. I could edit it for our particular store's needs. Uh, but that was, that was the biggest turnaround was the disciplinary action because now I'm, I'm, I'm compliant and it tracks everything. It's just, it's, Amazing, in my opinion. Awesome examples. Um, you know, and I, I'm wondering some uh, audience members might be thinking, "Wow, I'd love to tap into some of these ideas that uh, Matt and Connor that you just talked about." So again, I would put a plug for reach out to your CSM. Um, so Jeff is is a great resource, and your CSM can help because if there are lists that you're hearing about other operators using, the great thing about Joel is. Um, we can work with you to potentially uh, make a template of that available and, and kind of share some of that so you're not having to build from scratch. Um, so, and Jeff can probably speak more to that, but that, that's a great advantage as well of, of uh, working with your CSM. So Matt and Connor, great examples there. Cordy, let's close out the, the poll and maybe just uh, share with the audience the, the results there real quick. You bet. The top response was basic opening and closing lists followed closely by manager transition lists. Okay, so A and C, interesting, okay. So not as many people using uh, temp logs that are on the call today uh, or, or prepping for food safety and probably not as many people customizing yet. But again, that's why we're having this webinar. So uh, Matt and Connor can help shape that vision and uh, hopefully pique your interest into using more of that feature. So with that, um, Jeff, I'll hand it over to you to kind of walk through a little bit more about this and, uh, and we'll hear some more from uh, Matt and Connor and then we'll transition to information library uh, sensors and then um, print labels to wrap it up. Right. Yeah. No, thank you, Ryan and Matt and Connor. The context uh, that you folks gave is, is fantastic. I'd love to hear that. And really what I want to talk about with list is, you know, like Ryan had mentioned at the beginning, you know, maybe you are using a little bit of list, but maybe you're not maximizing. It's just like you mentioned, the top score or the top poll was just that basic aspect. We wanted to have Connor and Matt really dive into the thinking outside the box, the disciplinary action forms and those temp blogs and all of that, but that's going to work. Um, and so, you know, with that, we're talking about the process where you're going from the current process that maybe some of you are using now where you just, like Matt had mentioned, you know, I was a little apprehensive at first and moving over to Joel, I wasn't sure the time it was going to take. And like Matt contested with is like, hey, it doesn't take that much time at all to go from paper to digital. And so that is really where we want to dive into with that is to really show you is that, hey, you can take those basic lists. There's nothing wrong. Your basic opening and closing checklist, those are lists that are going to give your customers that sense of, of you know, I guess safety that they're going to be, they trust you. There's that system, uh, actual trust with Chick-fil-A um, that your stores are clean, but then taking it even further with those discipline action forms or temp blocks. This is one I really wanted to highlight with, with Joel, what you're able to do is with these temp blocks. And now Matt and Connor, I know both of you currently are using um, 
temp logs right now. And no, Connor, you're actually using it with the probe um, that you can get through us. And then Matt, you are not. I'd love to get kind of a, almost like a testimonial, like your story of, you know, hey, Connor, how was it, you know, going from paper temp logs and trying to hopefully trust your team to do it to actually using temp logs within Jolt and actually using the probe as well? Yeah, no, it's, it's like a world of difference, man. Um, accountability is huge for us. Um, and when you, when it comes to pen paper, um, and just possibility of human error, um, there's never that hundred percent guarantee that it's being done correct. Um, but with these new probes that we have, um, man, you stick it in there and you can almost guarantee it's going to be recorded accurately almost every single time. Um, and that's something I love because, uh, we've noticed a dramatic trend upwards in our food safety. Um, we actually just had EcoSure come yesterday and, um, all of our temp logs look so good. Uh, we missed, we didn't miss a single point as far as temperature goes. And I wow. really pretty much would like to thank Jolt for that because man, uh, the consistency with the temping and man, it's on point. I'm going to tell you. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's exactly what you want, um, you know, with that. And I love the fact that EcoShare's audit, you know, went, you know, like it was supposed to. And, and thanks for the, the shout out for that. I don't know if it's all us. You guys still have to actually do it. So that's fantastic. Um, and with that, Matt, before I kind of go to you, because you don't necessarily have to use the probe per se. The great thing about the probe that is, is, is really fantastic within Jolt is there's an option where you can actually make that probe required. Um, to where your team members cannot actually digitally pencil whip those temp logs anymore. They actually have to use the probe to capture the correct temperature, giving you as leadership that peace of mind, knowing that those temperatures are being captured correctly without human error. Um, and one of the things that our probes will do as well, it's not going to, once you stick it in the product, it's not going to just capture it immediately. It's going to stabilize just for a second to make sure it captures the correct temperature. So there's a lot of updates we've even done to the probe um, system itself over these last you know, year or two. Um, but with that, you don't have to use the probe. And Matt, you're currently not using the probe, but you're still seeing some success. So I'd love to kind of get your take on, you know, the paper aspect of, of temp logs to actually put in everything in Jolt as well. Yeah, so uh, on the, as I said earlier, the checklist that we created, one of those checklists, and he says, log the temperature of a fruit cup inside one of our low boys up front. And uh, obviously we don't have the Bluetooth temperature probes. So we just use our regular uh, Atkins thermometers and they'll go temp like a fruit cup and then they actually just type it into that checklist and on they go. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, temperature sensors in all of our fridges that will go in a little bit further depth here in a little bit. Right. No, that's perfect. And that's great. And that's, and that's exactly what we want is that peace of mind. One of the two things on, on um, this part of the slide I'd love to kind of point out is there's a corrective action aspect and then the actual alerts. So one of the great things with this, as you can see, and I know um, Connor, Matt, I don't actually believe you guys are actually currently even using this part of the feature as well, but there's a corrective action aspect that you guys can actually, or your folks can actually build out ahead of time. So instead of your team member just recording the, the incorrect temperature of whatever that might be, you have a corrective action list already built out ahead of time attached. So as soon as that temperature falls outside, whatever that minimum or max range is, if it's either too hot or it's too cold, it is going to trigger a corrective action. And then here is, you know, say, here's what matter. Here's what Connor needs you to do to get it back into temperature. And then you can have them either retemp it again. You could have them redo the whole list again, because maybe that temperature that went out of, out of whack, basically just disrupts the whole flow and you got to temp everything over again. So basically we want to make sure that we're taking um, Joel and putting that assistant manager in your team members hands. So when it is out of temperature, they don't have to come tug at your coattails going, you know, you know, hey, Matt, hey, Connor, what do I got to do? It's, it's too cold or it's not hot enough. And so you're really able to take that accountability piece even further. And then with that, you can even set up alerts. And I'm not, Matt and Connor, I'm not sure. I think, Connor, you mentioned you might have been using the alerts. Well, the great thing about the alerts with that is if they are out of temperature based on whatever alert you have set up, when they go to submit that item and it's out of that range, you as leadership can get that text or that email notification from Jolt saying that that temperature is out of range. So you are able to follow up and find out what is going on immediately without having that fear of like, oh, hey, did I just you know, poison somebody basically? So that's really something I wanted to show with that is you can really take your list and think outside the box and really go far with this. And like I mentioned with the probes, none of this is gonna cost anything extra. I mean, minus if you needed a probe, you can get a probe. Other than that, everything else is here for you guys to use right now. Um, Jeff, if I can interrupt real quick, uh, I know yeah. we move on here, but uh, I would say also with corrective action, just remember that uh, the list cannot be completed until the corrective actions, if it's required, right? So 
it, that's the good thing about it too, is it just ensures that that's completed before the entire list is submitted and shown as complete, which is a great advantage if you choose to, to use that kind of a, a feature within the list for food safety. Yeah. Right. But no, I'll, yeah, that's I'll, good. I'll say something to that. The, um, yeah. You know, one of the things that Chick-fil-A requires us to do is an ERQA or the Daily Safe audit. Uh, through the ERQA and Daily Safe, there is a, an option that says fix it now. So you have to have a team member fix it now. So this is very, very similar to that to where you can just say, hey, this is an additional thing. But one of the cool things that I looked into this the other day was uh, if they do select it and it, it is a corrective action, it actually creates a whole new list that it requires them to finish that before the end of the day passes. So it requires them to fix it, which is really really cool so i think i'm definitely going to start using that feature here pretty soon yeah we we uh, started using the corrective action forms not too long ago uh kind of when we started implementing the temp log and we definitely noticed an accountability accountability aspect kind of increased to where okay something's wrong instead of just hovering over it and moving on to the next thing we have to kind of stop and address the fact that it is wrong and it has to be corrected uh, so that was kind of nice to be able to see that something that I know things aren't necessarily getting skipped over um, and to see that when it is getting temped or it is out of temp, um, action is being taken for it. And it, it, like, we, like we're going for, like you said, that peace of mind definitely makes me feel better as far as food safety goes. Love it. That's exactly what we want to hear. And that's exactly what we want this, this, this system or this feature to do for um, you as leadership is that peace of mind. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to highlight as well is, you know, some of the best practices that we have is some of the on the spot training. What's really great about Jolt is you can actually take media, you know, media files, you can take videos, pictures, um, you could even put, you know, employee handbooks, all of that inside of Jolt to where now you can even attach that to a list item, as you can see on the screen there to where, there's a picture right there they can view, or maybe you have an attached video that they can click on that walks them through, hey, this is how the lemonade machine is supposed to be cleaned, or you know, whatever that task might be. You can use that as on-the-spot training lists. And we know that Pathway is a big thing that you folks use, um, and that's where a lot of that stuff is stored, but this is also a great like secondary way that you're able to actually store this information inside of Jolt to where now your team can actually go right on the tablet. You don't even have to have it connected to a list where they can go to the, the library tablet or part of the tablet, tap on it, and be able to actually view all of that right there from the actual device in the palm of their hand. Um, and I can actually show that here on this next part. Um, so yeah. I am going to... I'm gonna stop sharing. I think you're gonna do a little bit of a demo yep. here. So I'm gonna yep. use... Just a... Go ahead. Okay, and then I'm gonna take over just for a second. And you guys can see my simulator, right? I'll make sure it's on there. So what's really great about this aspect of this is you're gonna see this library tab that sits right here. So inside the information library on the web portal, anything that you guys upload, media content, videos, pictures, all of that, handbooks, all of that can be stored right here on the web portal, which now syncs down to the tablet. The great thing about that when you tap on this library is when you guys go to actually set that stuff up on the back end, there's actual file permissions you can set up. So you can decide, what roles are gonna see what. So not everyone has access to everything. But as you can see right here, even like a team member handbook, instead of them having to you know, go grab it or whip through that, they can actually just click on that, go right to the library tab, click on the team member handbook, it's gonna sit right here, and then basically it's gonna actually load right off the here, and you can flip this to a full screen. And now they can actually view this and scroll through here and read it right off the tablet. And the same thing would go for any kind of videos as well. Um, if there's any videos that you actually wanted to put on here, I mean, we have one that talks about food safety and there's holding requirements they can look at as well. Um, one of the things I really like, and I think I've got it under pathway links, training videos, and then clean the forage range. They can actually click on this and see real time video of what actually is being done and view that right on, on the device. And so there's a lot of cool things, whether that's videos you guys already have, you want to upload or ones you want to create yourself you can actually add and upload those into your Jolt account as well. So it's really a feature that doesn't get utilized as much as it probably could and should. And it's definitely another one that's also open to you as well. And I am going to stop sharing so Ryan can take back over. Yeah, I'll take you back over. And um, looks like there was a question that came in a little bit ago that maybe we could jump into as I'm sharing my screen again. It looks like someone asked about uh, maybe I think Matt, you mentioned the disciplinary forms. And so, uh, the question just explain a little bit more in depth of how you're doing that. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen back, but I think it was Matt that uh, said you were using those, right? Maybe you can just uh, give a little more detail there. 
I'm not sure if they're wanting to explain like how to set it up or um, just more in depth on the forms. Um, but basically it kind of depends on how you guys are utilizing disciplinary actions right now. Uh, if you're doing paper or if you're doing a Google form or whatever you're, you're doing, but uh, to do a disciplinary action, you would just create a list. Uh, you would create your questions within that disciplinary action and facilitate it that way. So, uh, we grab an iPad and I actually do it on my phone and I will have that team member sign their name right there on the phone or the iPad right here in the office with me. Awesome. And, and I think, I think the key point there too, is if, if there's an interest in trying to set up that kind of thing, again, reach out to Jeff and your CSM. Um, they can help uh, share some of those best practices and, um, it, and maybe if, if, if Matt or Connor are open to it, it seems like most operators are always willing to share templates of lists that they've found really helpful. Um, that we can share across uh, the Chick-fil-A brand as well. So, Yeah, and Ryan, just to piggyback off of that, one of the things that we have as well um, that you, we can, you guys can reach out to me as well is I have, we have a publisher account for Chick-fil-A that we use when, you know, when new Chick-fil-A's are coming on, we can get content like lists and stuff right inside their account immediately. That's something that um, I can subscribe to you folks when you reach out because we do have a disciplinary action form that's on there. I believe that might have been the one that I shared with Matt and then Matt kind of customized it himself. And there's back of house lists. There's also different kind of audits, all Chick-fil-A based that I can immediately subscribe you to. It doesn't cost anything extra. And then you don't have to reinvent the wheel again. So that can be an option as well. Um, if you're interested and you reach out and let us know and we can get that going for you. Yeah. And I would add one more thing, Jeff, uh, with the information library, just as we kind of close that section out, I would say also if, if folks want anything that's a uh, pre want any uh, content that, that you want preloaded as well, you, you can upload anything you want into the information library, but, if, uh, if you're newer to Jolt or haven't really used the information library, again, Jeff, your CSM can uh, help uh, upload some preloaded content there that uh, they've found to be useful across other Chick-fil-A brands too. So anyway, does, any setup that you need that you want to leverage, again, we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot we can help you kind of uh, to jumpstart things on any of these features. So, all right, Jeff, let's jump into uh, remote temperature sensors. Yeah, no, fantastic. So this is a, is a feature that we're really super proud of here at Jolt, um, one that we've been developing and constantly um, improving um, as the days, weeks, and years go by. Um, and this is where I really love to pick Matt's brain because Matt can, currently uses sensors. He's actually used a couple different versions of our sensors. Now he's using the latest one. And really what that current process is almost the same kind of way. You know, however you're recording it now, now everything can be, you know, digitized inside of Jolt and how that is basically all going to look and work. And Matt, I would really love to pick your brain um, and talk about the fact that, okay, what were you guys doing before you guys came to Jolt when it came to the temperature actual aspect, when it came to the sensors? And then one of the things I wanted to mention on here as well is he went, Matt went from our Bluetooth sensors, which was kind of our first kind of rollout back a little while ago, where everything was exactly that. It was Bluetooth, not quite as strong. And then now he's using lower Wayne sensors, which are extremely powerful, um, and all wireless, the gateway, as you can see here on the screen is actually ethernet to the router. And so, and these sensors that you'll see, you can see, you can either carabine them, clip them on your shelf. They are extremely strong. It's going to read through whatever thickness of a wall you've got and really feed that data to the back end. And Matt, I'd love to get your input on how that transition has gone from going to paper from that, going to Bluetooth and then coming to Laura. Yeah, so before we had temperature sensors, you know, we basically just recorded temperatures or if we noticed something was out of spec, we would then take the temperature with our Atkins thermometer and try to figure it out. Um, but one of the really cool things about temperature sensors that I, I asked our EcoSure auditor about about three weeks ago was uh, you're required to have an, an external or another additional internal thermometer inside these refrigerators. And he told me that these Jolt sensors actually work for both those options. So I no longer have to have an additional sensor if I have these jolt sensors in there. So I can just pull up my phone or the iPad and show them what the temperatures are at any time. Uh, so we, we first started with the, the Bluetooth temperature sensors. And with Bluetooth, Bluetooth is very, very short range. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that because uh, they're dealing with our awful iPad issues that we've been having for over five years. But uh, the Bluetooth sensors, they require a hub. And a hub requires uh, an electrical outlet. So I had to have five different hubs placed around my, my restaurant to try and get those uh, readings from those sensors that I had in all my refrigerators. So I have a total of 19 refrigerators in my restaurant and I have a, a temp sensor in every single one of them. So if you guys, I, I started off real slow. 
I put them just in my thought cabinets and breading table because that's obviously where our most expensive product is and the one that we rely on the most. And so that's why I started first. And then I realized, okay, this is, this is a good investment. And um, within the first month, I made my money back in those sensors because I had a thought cabinet go down in the middle of the night. And so I got the notification and sent me a text message if it doesn't meet temperature within an hour. And uh, so I got the text message. I woke up, saw the text message, and I immediately went up to the restaurant. Saw the chicken was, uh, we're still within range of the temp requirements, but the fridge was not keeping temp. So I was able to take all that chicken out and uh, basically turn that fridge off and save all that chicken, which was, you know, thousands of dollars of chicken that I just saved right there. And um, wow. that was with the Bluetooth sensors. So then we made the big jump to the LoRa sensors because I kept having issues of sensors dropping off and they couldn't read because Bluetooth is, you know, far inferior compared to LoRa. LoRa is basically a Wi-Fi signal. <clears throat> so if you have a Wi-Fi signal in the restaurant, you'll be able to read those sensors. <clears throat> So uh, again, I have 19 uh, LoRa sensors in every single one of my refrigerators at, at, at the restaurant. And we have zero um, issues trying to read those sensors. And I actually have it in my walk-in refrigerator and my freezer as well. And I get constant notifications if it doesn't reach temp, which is again, already saved me money that I've invested in it. Oh, that's fantastic, Matt. And that testimonial right there is what we want to see. I mean, whatever ways that we're helping you, you know, save your bottom line. I mean, like you mentioned, Matt, if you would have lost all of that inventory, I mean, that's thousands of dollars on your bottom line that you get hit on. So that's exactly what we want is to give you also that peace of mind that's being monitored. And, you know, folks that are listening in, uh, the other operators and leadership that are on here, these lower weighing sensors are a game changer. Um, and the great thing about that is, like we've mentioned before, is that this sensor option is available to you at no extra subscription cost. Um, if you guys, and you guys can decide how many, you know, you'll need the one gateway, I'll need one gateway, which is that the blue box you see there, and then however many sensors you need from that point on. Um, and so there's a lot of great advantage to that. And then you have everything in one system, your list, your labeling, your sensors, all of that is in, is in one area. And Matt, really quick before we go on to the next slide, how is, and Connor, you can chime in as well. I know you're thinking about sensors. How has that been having everything really in one platform, your sensors, your list, your labels, all of that basically, basically together? Yeah, your uh, mic's cutting out a little bit, by the way. I'm just going to let you know. Yeah, a little right. robotic there, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so having everything right there, you know, I have, I've got my discipline action. I've got my lists. I've got my labels. I've got my sensors. You know, having that all in one platform, is it's really kind of a game changer because, you know, think of the, all the apps you have on your phone for all the data that we're using, and uh, this, this compiles all of it in kind of one thing. And it's, I like simplicity, so I really like being able to just – Look, open up my Delta and see, hey, what's my walk-in fridge at right now? Love it. Love it. Connor, yeah, what about I'm, you? No oh, good. No, no. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like Matt in the same scenario. I, I love simplicity. Um, I, re I reiterate organization just about every single day in my store. So um, Joel itself kind of literally hits on both of those pretty hard. Um, I'm able to literally walk in any day. I can pull up out one app and literally everything is right there for me. Um, notifications are, are right there for me. List right there for me. Checklist, um, literally anything you name it. Temp logs, all this stuff is right here in my hands and it's good to go, ready to use whenever. It's awesome. I love it. That's fantastic. Um, and that's what we want. And then really on this one, I wanted to kind of pinpoint, you know, Matt was talking about how that temperature monitoring is going to work. It is 24 seven monitoring. Um, it can go into any of your walk-ins. Um, a lot of the active alerts that are, are possible with Jolt, that's really great is like, and Matt mentioned, he can just pull out on his phone and you can do that. All of those reports and all of that with the new app can also be sent to your cell phone as well to where it's the same UI. You can go to your cell phone and click on the sensors tab and view all those temperatures right there. And the great thing with Jolt sensors as well is that you are actually able to customize your own alerts. So you can decide how often and when you want to get notified of certain things. So you're not getting blasted all the time with maybe false stuff you can actually customize that to what you want to do. So there's a lot of great benefits um, to that. But what's really great with this sensor aspect um, on the next slide is to where you can actually take those temperatures now. And then um, Matt, you and I were talking about this uh, just a little while ago to where now you can actually build a list around that to where, as you can see right here on the phone, instead of them you know, having to still maybe try to capture it manually, they can actually have that list on their phone pre-built 
to where now they're just going down the line. You'll see where they can tap the little record button right there. They hit that. It's going to capture that last reading, pull it to the list item, and on to the next thing. So you could stand right behind the counter or in the back office and do that list right there and let the sensors do everything else for you. You're really saving a lot of time um, with that. And now I know, Matt, you mentioned you're kind of doing a different process right now, and this could be a game changer. But even with the sensors, how has capturing this with these sensors benefited you and saved you time from having to like do it manually? Yeah, just think about taking your, your Atkins thermometer and going up front and temping every single low boy. I mean, you have average restaurant has five or six low boys. You know, how long is that going to take you to do that? You know, maybe 10 minutes to do all those. Because one of the cool things about these sensors is it, it doesn't temp, you know, the ambient temperature. It, it, I mean, when you open up that fridge, air goes out. It's not going to read the right temperature when you, right when you put that Atkins thermometer in. And these sensors actually temp the actual what, what a food would temp in. So it's, it's kind of get, let you know, like uh, Jeff was saying, you won't get those false negatives on there for you. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, having those uh, temps automatically go record into a list for me is definitely going to be a game changer for me as well. I, like I said, uh, Jeff said, I'm not using these right now. Uh, right now, one of my lists just says, hey, is any of the low boys up front below uh, or above 40? And that's the question. It's yes or no question. But now I can actually just click on there and it records it automatically. It, it's awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. And actually, we actually just got a question uh, in from Michael. It says, with sensors, do you only get a text and email alert or is it there an option for an automated phone call? So currently right now, Michael, it is only just text and email alerts. Um, that has been um, talked about. Um, I do believe they're looking at some options to be able to have like an automated phone call. I'm not exactly sure where that's out on the roadmap, but currently it is just text and email alerts right now. That's a great question. I think uh, what's worth adding one more thing here, Jeff, to the conversation. Yeah. Um, so for those that are not familiar with sensors and how it works, we kind of showed that visual of the, the technology itself, but it's also important to keep in mind is you can save a lot of time bringing those temperatures into less as you see on the screen here. And as, as we've been talking about, the other thing to keep in mind though, is those sensors are con constantly monitoring um, and are pulling in the, uh, the temperature of food product uh, through a, uh, through a simulation um, a development code that we have that simulates that accurately, like like Matt was talking about, and then and that those readings are coming in every 15 minutes, and that's all stored um, here in in your Jolt account. So so those notifications certainly are awesome. That's a great suggestion for a phone call. But but the great thing is is it is those alerts are it's going to alert you throughout the day if if there's any fluctuation that's of concern where your food product is being compromised. Again, that frequency every 15 minutes is, uh, is it's pretty much throughout the day, all the time, uh, keeping track of your inventory. Right. And then with that reading every 15 minutes too, we kind of found that's, that's the good sweet spot is we've extended the battery life on those sensors from anywhere between about 15 to 18 months. So those sensors, battery lives are going to um, hang around for quite a while. Fantastic. Yeah. And some tests we're, we're doing, I think uh, we'll extend it even longer than that, even two to three years. So I, I think there's the, the longevity. It's a good call out there, Jeff, that, uh, that uh, the longevity of the hardware and your invest, upfront investment of that hardware um, is, is, is uh, elongated even more. So anyway, right. that's great feedback there. Well, why don't we transition to, to labels, Jeff? We'll kind of wrap up with this. Uh, we know a lot of Chick-fil-A operators are using labels, um, but again, there might be even uh, more that you could be using uh, printer labels for than you're currently using. So we want to highlight some of that as well. Um, I think we wanted to start with the poll question because we know a lot of you are using printer labels. So before we get into the, the walkthrough and, and discussion here, um, another quick poll question the Courtney's gonna throw up. What has been the most significant benefit you've seen with Jolt labels? Um, and so I know that you might wanna select multiple, but we're really curious, like what, if you had to choose any of these on the screen, what is it? Is it waste reduction? Is it time and cost savings? Is it improved food safety audit scores? Is it individual accountability? Um, or maybe you're not currently using Jolt labels yet, and uh, that might be something you're considering as you listen in on the call today. So as people are responding to that, um, Connor and, and uh, Matt, maybe speak to this. Uh, what, how would you answer this question as far as the most significant benefit you've seen? Uh, Connor, do you want to start there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I wish I could say all of them, but uh, if I could just pick one, I mean, the accountability aspect is huge. Um, so back when I was at that first location before they did have, or before we were introduced to Jolt, um, data outs were the go-to as far as 
putting them onto products. And a lot of times it would just be maybe, maybe a messy initial and then obviously the date. Um, and that was, that caused a lot of air as far as, okay, who did this? Um, how can I point out like this is wrong? Um, and then when, once we're introduced to Jolt and doing those, uh, those labels, it says exactly who it was, when it was printed, um, and what it's for. Um, so not only did it help with the accountability aspect, but I mean, just uh, the food safety as well, making sure we're putting the right sticker with the guaranteed right date and the right time on it as well. Okay, Matt, uh, how about you? Matt, Connor, great, great examples there. Um, sorry we had to restrict it to just one, but I'm just kidding. But Matt, what about you? Yeah, so uh, one of the stupid things that Chick-fil-A has required us to do recently is uh, put date labels on all of the thaw cabinet trays. You know, I'm pretty sure, like, I think they said 60, 70% of the chain got marked off for this on that last eco share because they had, tra they had a date label on just the first tray, not all of the trays. So, uh, you know, I was called a jolt because I found jolt because of the sticker process. You know, that was the biggest thing was uh, time. You know, how long does it take someone to fill out an original date dot? I mean, it takes a long time to fill out that many for a thought cabinet. You know, with, with jolt, you hold down how many you need, whether that be 20 or 30, and you're done. So definitely cost savings for me. Yes, time and cost savings, great. Uh, Cordy, what, what did the audience say on this one? You want to share the results there? That so our top response at 37% is individual accountability, followed at 26% with improved food safety audit scores. Oh, and then kind of spread out from there. So pretty mixed uh, mixed response here. Interesting. Okay. Um, good. Well, Jeff, uh, why don't you take us home and uh, walk us through a little bit more about uh, print labeling and, and even some updates that are fairly new to uh, this this part of the Jolt solution. Yeah, so I, I love this aspect. I really want to talk this. This is going to be great. Um, what I really love about the Jolt labeling um, is we're constantly knowing that we want to improve um, those aspects as well, remove that human error. As most of you know that are using it, you know, it's, it is, you know, 100% accurate. It's all customized. You guys are able to really, um, you know, pinpoint down who's printing what and have that accountability. The big thing I want to shout out right here, as you see on the screen, is we have a new solution called JPS, Jolt Printer Station. So some of you that might have had connection issues, um, we all know sometimes Bluetooth connection, even Wi-Fi connections at that point can be kind of not as strong. One of the things that we've been working on is um, and hearing our customers out is, hey, we've got a, we've got a better solution now um, that is getting rolled out here soon. And with that, it's now a dedicated tablet. It is now all hardwired. You can get a countertop mount or you can get a wall mount. And with that, it's plug and play. There's no more Bluetooth involved. There's no more Wi-Fi involved. The only time you have to connect to the Wi-Fi is if any updates you make on the back end, on the web portal, you want to make sure you, it syncs down to the device and then you can go back off of it again. And it is extremely fast. Still those six labels per second. Um, just so you know, a lot, some of my team members and I actually installed some um, ones that we were kind of testing out here locally here in Utah. And the team members in the back of house eyes were wide open. Um, they couldn't believe how fast it was, no leg time, no nothing. So if you are experiencing those connectivity issues, this is an option you can go with um, that will be rolled out here soon. So please let us know and reach out. If you're interested, we can get you in contact with the right people. But this has been a game changer we've been working on and super proud to kind of bring forth and, and uh, showcase to all of you. Um, and with that, I love to pinpoint one of the things with Joel is, as you've seen with lists, even with the sensor scenarios, everything is customizable. There isn't um, anything that we're going to like lock you out of. I mean, even with the labels, you guys can customize what you want the labels to look like, what do you want it to say, what you want, what, what it's a QR code they need to scan. You guys can go as far as you need to go with this. It may not be necessary with Chick-fil-A, but it is an option that we make to where you guys can come in and update expiration times, all of that whenever you need to, without having to wait for like a, a second or a third party um, actually updating that for you. Um, and then really, uh, you know, with that on the next slide, which this is something that probably doesn't get used as often, and it's more of an information highway, but in the web portal, there is a report you can use for label reporting. A lot of this, you're able to track how many labels you're, how well you're doing, you know, per day, per week, per month, you know, who's printing the most, who would I want to give a shout out that's actually, you know, if there's someone that's supposed to be on the prep side of things and they're not printing as many labels as they should, you can, you can kind of catch that. Um, this is a great way for you to kind of see your volume of labels that you're doing. Um, I have a lot of operators that are, that are using this aspect where they're tracking, you know, 
if all of a sudden their, their label usage is through the roof, but it starts dipping a little bit and maybe you, you're running out of labels and your team hasn't mentioned that to you. So there's a great information highway within this. And all this is in the web portal under the labels tab to where you're able to go to this reporting and really filter down, you know, I said month, day, how, where you're doing, who's doing what, and how much is being printed. So it's definitely just a really good information highway for that. Hey, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Into the Q and A. Hi, yeah. so this was asking. Uh, we are currently using the lists, which are great, but reviewing them is a bit time consuming. What are Connor and Matt's stores doing to review the completed lists? Who's responsible for reviewing viewing the completed list, and how long does it take? Oh, well, that's a great question, Matt and Connor. Take it away. That's great. Um, so, as far as that goes, uh, depending on what type of list it is, so whether it be it has simple order form or just the opening and closing checklist. Uh, so for example, with our kitchen, with the opening and closing uh, checklist, um, I will get notified via email and text um, each time this list is completed. Um, and when, once that is completed, um, I can literally just pull up the email or text, scroll through it, make sure everything's done properly. Uh, we basically have it set up to where pictures are taken with each task. Uh, so whether it be the bun toaster is set up properly, Prior handles are correct, anything in that nature. Um, I just simply have them take a picture, make sure it's good. I can go through that list. All the pictures are good. Okay, put my phone away, good to go. Um, it's really good for the accountability aspect and um, it allows me to stay on top and make sure things are done correctly. Yeah, so one of the things that we did, because we had, we had the issue with accountability as well. So um, for my weekly cleaning checklist, you know, cleaning your ice, your ice bins, your ice machine, all those things, uh, you know, if they would go through and check it off and it was done, you know, it was, it was gone. Like they said it was done, but who was actually going back through and double checking that. So we created a, uh, a, a signature option on that checklist and only leaders were allowed to sign that. And then when, on addition to that, we had an additional, uh, list that only leaders are allowed to see and update. And one of those questions is, hey, go back through and double check that weaning, weekly cleaning task to make sure it was done correctly. So they're pretty much reviewing those completed lists on a daily basis rather than coming to myself or one of our other directors. You know, our leaders, our, our front of house leaders are the ones going through and double checking it. That's some great context. I appreciate Matt and Connor kind of giving what you guys are doing. And, and that's the great thing too with Joel is whatever is going to work best um, for you and your team. Um, but that's what... Ryan, as mentioned before, to utilize us as well, we can definitely get on calls and do screen shares and do best practices as well and, and really dive into how you can make that reporting more streamlined even faster. Um, hopefully that it helped uh, answer that question. We did get one more that came in. Um, it says, is there a way to have a constantly updated label information from Chick-fil-A so that I don't have to go in and manually update for every change or new item? Uh, currently, Robert, there is not. Um, we, it usually it is a manual process right now. We do help with that. We do have a master list that we keep track of that sometimes operators will say, hey, we got like, the new brownie or you know, when mac and cheese first came out that we update. Um, we help with that as well to where if you, if you guys, I know things are get busy. If you've got new items that you don't see in your labels and you want help with, utilize us as well. Feel free to, uh, to reach out. We'll get that in there. But right now, it's all manual. Nothing's really automated um, as of yet. Okay, great questions. I uh, really appreciate it. And, and as we kind of start to wrap up, we have one last final poll question. But uh, feel free to submit any other questions that are on your mind. We're happy to, to answer those in the last remaining minutes we have. But we'd love to hear from, from you guys. Um, based on what you've heard today, we hope this has been a valuable use of your time. I, I, know, I know I've learned a lot just listening to Matt and Connor and understanding more about what they're, what they're doing with their operations. Um, so hopefully this has been really productive for everyone on the call. We'd love to hear like what, uh, which feature are you most likely to start using after today's webinar? Um, and uh, just, just select uh, one of the four. It could, be, it could be even multiple. I know we had about 80% of the audience that was only using two or two or fewer of these uh, features, but um, respond to that. And uh, while everyone's kind of responding, we'll, let's uh, kind of wrap up and uh, uh, go to you, Connor and uh, Matt, just for any closing comments or statements that anything else you'd want to share with other uh, operators, uh, your colleagues across Trick play um, Connor, do you want to close any wrap up comments? Um, yeah, I mean, man, if you're not on Joel, man, get on Joel, it's awesome. Um, we really, we really have noticed a big turnaround, especially uh, past six months. We hit Jolt pretty hard um, as far as uh, just getting the full utilization out of it. Uh, that's kind of when we introduced our training guides. 
Um, and we even introduced small things like guest recovery lists. I mean, guest recovery is important, super, super important for Chick-fil-A. We're all about that. Um, and just making easy ways to track that and make sure we stay organized with it. Just, just the possibilities are endless with this Joel. And I mean, I love it so much, uh, as you guys couldn't tell. And I, uh, I just really, really hope you guys can get on board. And obviously, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Cause I'm sure Matt and I both have plenty of experiences with Joel. Yeah, I love that uh, the comment about um, um, guest recovery, and, and, and you know, we've seen other brands using that too, where they're starting to realize, oh, we could leverage the logbook or other lists to kind of help with communication across uh, shift transitions to make sure guests are um, are being, uh, you know, their problems are being resolved, and we're getting back to them. It's good customer service, and we're closing the loop, and um, yeah, just like you said, possibilities are endless for sure. So, um, Connor, thanks again. Uh, Matt, any closing comments you want to share with the audience? Yeah, I would definitely reiterate the the sensors portion and tell you guys, like like I said, it, it saved me in in one time what I invested in these sensors. So if you're if that's what you're weighing this impact on is the cost of those sensors, it's irrelevant, in my opinion. Yeah, that example is pretty powerful. Um, and and by the way, if if anybody has questions about uh, hardware costs for uh, for sensors or the uh, the Jolt printing station. Uh, just reach reach out to Jeff or CSM. We can connect you with uh, um, our sales team as well. Um, but again, th there's no additional subscription costs, right? Because uh, Chick Fil A has a pre-negotiated uh, rate. Um, we're so there, there's no additional cost to take advantage of all these features that we've highlighted today from a software standpoint. Just that initial initial investment of the hardware. And, and like Matt said, it, there's just so many examples across so many different brands now that are starting to see the vision of sensors and how much that is saving um, from, from what could have been uh, uh, a hugely negative impact on, on, on inventory loss. So uh, with that, Courtney, why don't we uh, just share the results of this last poll and we'll kind of wrap up. You bet, Info Library came in first place at 42%, followed by Sensors at 31%. Oh, interesting, awesome, good. Well, glad to see that people saw more value there in Information Library and Sensors. And, Hopefully there's even uh, a lot of people who are using checklists, but maybe you're seeing a lot more ideas of how to use that. And uh, and again, with the Joel printing station, please let us know uh, as you're more interested in that. Um, Courtney, I think is gonna, if you could everyone take uh, just one or two minutes, we have a short survey. Um, Courtney's gonna drop that into the uh, uh, the chat area. Um, if you could click, up, click on that link and um, take one or two minutes uh, before you move on to the next thing in your day, and just let us know what you thought of today's webinar. We'd really appreciate the candid feedback. It's gonna help us. Uh, we do plan on doing more webinars like this um, to get more in detail. If there's, if there's uh, other topics that you wanna hear more about, we, we wanna hear that and we wanna hear of uh, other ways to, to format this to be productive and helpful for each of you. So please click on that and give us your feedback there. And with that, Jeff, I'll let you kind of close here just to reiterate uh, uh, you as a great resource and also our Joel support team for our operators to reach out to us. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, as you can see, you know, use me as your resource. Um, I'm your guys, I'm your folks main go to. I'm here to help as much as possible, as Matt said, and I appreciate the kind comments from Matt. Um, but, you know, I, I'm here to help. Um, you guys aren't, you know, you're not just some metric on a computer screen that, I, you know, I need to talk to you once in a while. We're, we're going to build that relationship. We're going to work together and we're going to make sure you, we succeed together. Um, and, you know, to make sure that you're getting that value and success you need. I mean, that's feel free to reach out to me via email. Um, that's my calendar. You can always schedule a call right to my calendar. And then also, you know, utilize support as well. If you're not able to get a hold of me, um, you can also call support. They are very good at troubleshooting and helping you answer certain questions and then also getting in connected with a CSM myself as myself to basically help with that. And so please, um, as we said at the beginning of the webinar, please utilize us. We're here to help. Um, we are not, you know, we're not going to be here to, to kind of upsell you on anything. We just want you to be successful with the software and see that um, your operations being streamlined and see that success. Um, and then with that, we did get one last question um, from Adam. Uh, with the recent integration, does it add more than just the employees we have? Uh, right now, the integration is just when it comes to the actual people, HR side of things, to import your people. Um, where that integration could go in the future, um, I'm really excited to see. I'm not sure what doors that's going to open. Um, I do know that 
uh, corporate, when we first rolled this out a while ago, wanted us to really start there because of the turnover that Chick-fil-A's can have sometimes and the time it takes to bounce from, you know, platform to platform, inputting people and then taking them out all the time. So currently it is just on the people side of things and their information. Um, but where that goes in the future, um, I'm, I'm not sure yet, but that's a great question. Yeah, great question. And uh, thanks again for the participation today by everyone. A uh, huge special thanks to Matt and, and uh, Connor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, your insights were invaluable and really appreciate um, all you're doing. And uh, Connor, you hit, kind of hinted at this, but uh, it sounds like you guys are more than willing to connect with any operators who are either new to Jolt or trying to maybe expand into other uh, features within Jolt as we've talked about today. So, um, you know, happy to help connect, uh, connect folks if, if they're interested. But thanks again, uh, Matt and Connor. Really appreciate you guys participating today. And we hope everyone can join us again on our next uh, adult uh, training webinar. Have a great day, everybody, and uh, um, enjoy the rest of your week.